to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. I'm your host this morning, and every morning for that matter. <laughs> we are, um, as you know, broadcasting uh, on our website, and I hope that you've joined us. We will, uh, of course, post this up on our Facebook page after uh, all is said and done today, and up on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, <clears throat> I want to cover a couple of issues this morning that are of paramount importance. You know, I've been talking and, and warning for months that the, uh, the Congress has been talking about what qualifies as a journalist, uh, who and where and under what circumstances those individuals would be classified as a journalist. And the reason that I think they're doing that is because it gives them an opportunity to essentially um, manipulate the, the media. And I know, and I've been saying for quite some time, that what they're going to do is actually begin to uh, define a journalist as someone who is a an individual who is paid full time or is hired by one of the mainstream organizations or whatever the case may be with that. The reason they're doing that is because they control those mainstream organizations and we don't. And the reason that they want to control the journalists out there is because they don't like the, the topics and the, and the content that they're hearing from a lot of non-professional journalists. And so I've pre been predicting for quite some time that one of the things they're going to do is attempt to force journalists to obtain a license, if you will. And this group of bungling treasonous ticks in Congress, and this is a group of senators that have been meeting to discuss how they can limit our free speech rights in open defiance of the Constitution. Now, the Senate Judiciary Committee is looking for ways that they can uh, add protections for journalists, and they're, what they're doing is they're, um, they're calling this a, a, a protection bill, uh, for, and, and they're relating this to the Rosen case where, uh, in fo from Fox News and the AP case where they were monitoring their telephone calls. And under this legislation, and they're trying to actually do this under legislation, they're trying to define and agree on the definition of journalist. Here's the problem with that. If they do pass a shield law for journalists, the obvious is true. That what is a shield law for journalists will become a law that can criminalize and prosecute non-journalists. So they've attempted to do this before. Pat Leahy, the senator from Vermont, who's a Democrat, says he, this is, he's hoping that the third time's a charm. I got to tell you, you know, these people out there who think they have the authority, the moral authority, the legal authority, the constitutional authority to determine who and who is not going to be shielded from prosecution because they won't reveal their sources or because they have had communications with someone who's a whistleblower is unacceptable. And the reason for that is a lot of whistleblowers aren't going to want to go to the mainstream media and work with them. Why? Because the mainstream media is not going to cover their story or they'll turn around and rat them out. So here's what you have to recognize. They're trying to define this, and they're trying to define it as a person who has, quote, a primary intent to investigate events and procure material in order to inform the public by regularly gathering information through interviews and observations. 
The person must also intend to report on the news at the start of obtaining this protected information and must plan on publishing that news. Now, here, here's what, here, here's what uh, Senator Amy Kl- uh, Klo- Klobuchar from Minnesota, she's a Democrat, uh, here's what her, her comment was. I'm concerned this would provide special privilege to those who are not reporters at all. Bingo. There you go. That's the real crux and the real truth of what they're trying to accomplish. See, what they're really trying to do is define what kind of privilege those who are on their side of the ideological fence will obtain. And you can be damned. Feinstein from California suggests the definition should be comprised only of journalists. Listen to her. You, you can tell this woman is a traitor. Every time this woman's mouth opens and words pour forth, you can tell that she is on the betrayal run. Listen to this. She suggests that the definition should compromise only journalists who make salaries, saying it should just be applied to, quote, real reporters. I mean, if that doesn't tell you everything that you need to know, I, I, I don't know what, else, what more you need from a proof perspective. Now, Schumer, who's a, no, a Democrat from New York, I, I really don't like this guy, but he does actually come out and say there are bloggers and others on the Internet who don't necessarily receive salaries. His comment was, the world has changed. We're very careful in this bill to distinguish journalists from those who shouldn't be protected. Whoops, stop right there. As soon as you say shouldn't be protected, we've got a problem. Because if you're going to try and tell me that everyone isn't protected with First Amendment free speech, then I tell you that you're operating in open, undeclared, or in this case, declared treason. He says, we're very careful to distinguish journalists from those who shouldn't be protected. WikiLeaks and all those. And we've ensured that. Really? So you're trying to tell me that WikiLeaks and Edward Snowden wouldn't be covered under this. He goes on to say, but there are people who write and do real journalism in different ways than we're used to. They should not be excluded from this bill. Who he's referring to there are Media Matters. That's his organization. That's his ideological side of the fence. And so what we have to recognize is that these people, and when you talk about Feinstein and Schumer sitting on the same, and Patrick Leahy sitting on the same committee, trying to decide who gets First Amendment protection and who doesn't, let me tell you something, folks. The game is afoot. In fact, it's already, the end of the game has already been sealed. The only question we outstanding at this point is how bad are they going to whack-a-mole those who they don't consider a journalist? Now, the, the Standing Committee of Correspondents this is a group that, of reporters that issues congressional press passes and so forth. Like This is the group that defines who gets into the White House to sit in on, on uh, presidential uh, press conferences and things like that. They require that reporters be full-time and paid in order to get a pass. The problem, of course, with that is that, as we well know, there are many, many folks out there, myself included, who, while I am not a traditional journalist, I don't work for the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or, uh, you know, I don't work for Communist News Network or Faux News, that doesn't mean that I am not protected if, uh, per se, a whistleblower were to come to me and I did an exclusive uh, opportunity for a news-breaking article. How can you sit there and say that just because I don't work for one of the main Uh, mainstream media ministry of propaganda organizations that I am not protected under free speech and that I cannot have the opportunity and the right to protect a source. In other words, when do you begin to say this person's a journalist and that person's not? The bill would require that the Justice Department notify reporters if they do seize their phone records like they did with the Associated Press and with um, uh, Rosen from Fox News, that they would be required to notify them uh, 45 days after they begin monitoring. In other words, so they've got a 45-day window to monitor them without exception before they have to tell them. Oh, and by the way, they can extend that for another 45 days. 
So basically, they've got a 90-day pass. You know what this is called? This is what's called under the admin, under the um, the uh, Patriot Act, what's called a sneak and peek search. All right, let me define that for you because you may not know what that is. A sneak and peek search is the search that the under the Patriot Act they're allowed to do. In other words, they can enter your home, walk around, do a full-blown search, take photographs, write down all the evidence they find, then take that information and go back to a judge and say, here's what we found, Your Honor. The guy had a gun. The guy had drugs. The guy had a, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, a pressure cooker, whatever the case may be. And then use that information to get the true written warrant that they come back and knock on your door while you're home with handcuffs in their hand. Folks, that is the most blatant violation of the Fourth Amendment that you're ever going to find. Nothing could be further from, from the truth and the reality of what, you, what uh, you are or they are required to do in order to determine whether or not you are a, uh, whether or not you are a criminal. So uh, my problem with all of this is real simple. I believe that where we stand right now, we are operating outside the scope of law. We are operating well outside the limitations of what the Constitution allows. And I, for one, am just, have just about had my fill of it. I'm done with it. I, I think we, what we need to do is make it very clear and appropriate that we are operating and we were no longer willing to tolerate what's happening in our government in terms of their violations of our Fourth Amendment rights. Anyone who suggests otherwise really needs to evaluate what their real true understanding is of the Constitution. If, if you don't recognize right now what we are, what we are dealing with as a, a federal government that has already descended into tyranny and has already taken over our nation as a usurper, then I really don't know what to suggest, other than the fact that you need to go back and read your Constitution again and make sure that you're fully aware of what the issues are because where we stand today is completely outside the scope of legitimate operating power so what i want you to recognize is that where we where we are operating in as a nation today is completely outside the scope of authority of all constitutional limitations and as a result what we have is a constant or, or a, a government that is run completely 100 percent amok to me, as far as I'm concerned, that's inexcusable, and it's every violation that you could dream about. This has now become a police state. You're living in it, you're subjected to it, and you have no idea about how to resolve it. And that's the simple truth of it. There's no other discussion to be had. Everything else is diatribe. Everything else is marketing. Okay. I'm going to jump to another topic here because... I think it's important that we address this issue as well. The FBI concluded that there was little that they could have done to prevent the Boston Marathon bombings. In other words, according to these law enforcement officials, they are stating that in the FBI that they that irrespective of however much monitoring they've been doing, they could not have done a better job and could not have avoided or found or identified these individuals before the uh, Boston bombing occurred. And what that tells me, and what that should tell you, is that everything that they are doing right now in reference to monitoring is a scam upon America. In other words, all of this money that they're spending, billions upon billions of dollars, they're terrorizing Americans, everyone's living in fear, and this is our own domestic population, but it never did help them to spot a real terrorist in advance. What it tells us is that this is proof that all of this is simply nothing more than an excuse to build massive dossiers on every American to be used later on for whatever nefarious purposes they deem appropriate. I, 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 challenge, I challenge you and I challenge everyone in an official position within the FBI and the NSA and this administration and all of these ticks in Congress. I challenge you to find me one. Just one good thing that can come from government knowing every move, 
every word and every thought that you have. Outside of the the argument that it preserves us and protects us from terrorism, I want you to find me one good thing that can come from massive dossiers being built on every American citizen. Every person that can give me one good answer, jump onto my Facebook page and and post it underneath that story, or send me an email to mike at americasvoicenow.org, and I will give you 10 bucks. Cash. Because I can tell you right now, there is not a single person out there, including everyone in Congress, including everyone in the NSA, including everyone in the FBI, including everyone in the CIA, and including everyone in the White House administration, that can give you a legitimate, valuable, beneficial function that will come from these dossiers. From the health care hub that's coming through Obamacare, from the NSA's monitoring of your email, your phone calls, your your uh, records of all your internet searches. Not one good thing can come from this, other than their one argument that it saves you from and it provides security. But we all know that the security doesn't exist. How do we know that? Because we just saw the reality that you cannot have security because the FBI couldn't even find these two Boston bombers. And their argument that they are using all of this surveillance to monitor and save Americans from whatever it was, some 50 or 54 terrorist attacks, as they as they like to throw out there. The simple truth is that's a lie as well. It's a lie because those people that were, were that were caught weren't caught as a result of this program. They were caught as a result of many other boots on the ground and intelligence functions. So I, I got to tell you, you know, you'll notice that they are very carefully worded when they do this. They always say we that this program assisted in capturing those individuals or thwarting attacks. And what that tells me, and it ought to tell you, is that they know that this is no there, there's no function served by this other than the complete and absolute dissolution of the rule of law and the and the and the limitations of privacy on Americans. That's really what it comes down to. In addition to that, we also know that under the uh, under the the uh, the news that broke yesterday on uh, from the Guardian that the NSA has paid the UK's NSA over a hundred million dollars in secret funding. Secret funding. Now, what that now? It's by the way, that's a hundred million pounds, which is actually about a hundred and forty million dollars. What that and, and I got to tell you, the revelations that come out of this are stunning. What's happening is that the GCHQ, which is there, that's the NSA for, for England and the UK. What's happening is they are spying on Americans and then handing the information to the NSA. Americans are spying on the UK and then handing the, uh, on, on the citizens in the UK and then handing the information to the UK. And that way, both parties have the option to be able to sit there and say, well, we didn't spy on American citizens. See, here's the, here's the NSA statement. You spy on Americans, we'll spy on the English, and then, we can, and then we, as both sides, can say, we didn't violate any laws. You get it? It's real simple, folks. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know what's going on here. And by the way, they've been doing this for years and years and years under what was called the Echelon Program, and I alerted about that I can't even tell you how many years ago. What it was, it was a round robin between the United States, England, and Australia. And these guys were shuffling data between the three of them, having other countries spy on their their citizens, so that, on, on an alternate country's citizens, so that they could legally say, we didn't do it. Then the information that, or the results that were returned were handed off to that given country. And the premise behind it all is very simple. These people now have an opportunity to declare that they were legally or lawfully engaged in non-spying on domestic Americans, only on foreigners. That, ladies and gentlemen, is treason. And there's no other way to argue about it. There's no other point to be made. All right. We've got about four minutes, and before we wrap, I want to break this on Benghazi, because this is unbelievable. Yesterday, they came out with a a declaration from Benghazi, uh, or on Benghazi, that dozens of CIA operatives were on the ground during the attack in Benghazi. And this is uh, brand new information that's hit. And there were four Americans, 
uh, including uh, Ambassador Christopher Stevens, who were killed. All right. What we're finding out now is that not only were there dozens of CIA operatives that were on the ground during that attack, and many, many, many of them were injured, but the, the Department of State and the CIA has been hiding these individuals, refusing to give the, the Senate and the House in their investigative committees the location, the names, and the identification of who these individuals are. But guess what? It gets even worse. They have actually gone to the extent of changing their names. Representative Trey Gowdy was on Greta Van Susteren yesterday, and he discussed this scandal. Here's what he said. Including changing names and creating aliases. Stop and think what things are most calculated to get at the truth. Talk to people with first-hand knowledge. What creates the appearance of perhaps the reality of a cover-up? Not letting us talk with people who have the most amount of information, dispersing them around the country, and changing their names. Here's the problem. What we have is a scenario where the, they are actually hiding these people and going to the extent of actually changing their names. People, that is a terrifying prospect. I mean, really terrifying. But, but Listen to this. Blocking it. I mean, we can't find these survivors. I'd love to interview the survivors, but the administration is doing everything it can to hide them. They're dispersing around the country. And, of course, you know, the, the CNN report shows that even CIA operatives who were there are getting intimidated uh, from above. Including changing names, creating aliases. So you stop and think what things are most calculated to get at the truth, talk to people with first-hand knowledge, what, what creates the appearance or perhaps the reality of a cover-up? Not letting us talk to people who have the most amount of information, dispersing them throughout the country, and changing their names. Can you imagine? This is a congressman. I, I grant you he doesn't like the Obama administration. But people, listen to what he's saying. That the CIA and the DOS, Department of State, are collectively working together to hide the truth about Americans. I got to tell you, that to me is such a frightening prospect that every American should be up in arms about it, and every American should be recognizing exactly how dangerous this is. This is a frightening new, new turn of events. And it, it, I'll tell you, I am, I am um, utterly amazed that this is the kind of activity that our government thinks is appropriate. We're going to take a break in just a moment. And when we come back, I'm going to touch on a couple of other things that are going on, including the issue of these scandals that are happening and how they're operating and what the real ramifications are for America. The goal, of course, is that you be educated and informed, motivated and activated to take action against treason in our government. We'll return in just a couple of minutes. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans, and I'm your host. Please find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org and find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. We'll be right back. America's Voice Now. 